So on question two, it says this question involves two classes that are used to process log messages. A list of sample log messages is given below. Notice that all of my log messages are going to have some machine followed by a colon and then some error message. And we're going to have to kind of break this up when we comes to our class here. Notice that we're going to have to write a constructor that given a message is going to fill in this machine ID and the description. Remember the purpose of a constructor is to initialize these variables. And then later on we're going to talk about okay how do we tell if a particular log contains a keyword. So we're going to start with this constructor, the idea that given a message we can break it up into its constituents. Remember that we need to fill in those private data variables. And what's really key to remember is that it was the machine and then a colon and then we had some description. So what I need to do is make sure that I find out where that colon is. So I'm going to say int spot is going to get message dot index of whatever the position of colon happens to be. And I'm going to use this spot as my parameter. Keep in mind that spot is here. So I can use a substring that starts at zero and goes up to spot. And then something that's at spot plus one and goes to the length. Everything before the colon is going to be machine and everything after it's going to be the description. So I can say that machine is going to get whatever message dot substring starting at zero and going to spot. And that's going to take care of everything up to this point. Now what's important to note is that when I want the description I want after spot. So when I talk about description I want to make sure that description is going to be message dot substring starting at spot plus one and I could put message dot length but remember that if I just give substring one parameter it automatically goes to the end of the string so we're good. So it's a very simple way to do the constructor for this log message class. If I have some message I want to find the colon and break it up to whatever's before the colon and whatever's after the colon. So this was the easy part. The next part is the hard part. This is actually one of the hardest questions on the exam. Given some word, we have to look and find where that word lies in the message. And keep in mind that I either need to see it at the very beginning or there has to be some space before the word disk. Notice that if there isn't a space before disk, that doesn't count. And it has to have be at the very ending or there has to be a space following it. So in other words, if I just have some other keyword here, some letter following disk, that's not going to be enough. And of course it does need to actually be lowercase. It has to match exactly. I don't want to use equals ignores case. I want to use equals when I'm comparing these out. Now if this looks familiar, this should look like something we did in our Magpie video. And I'll have a link to it up here so you can see how we did it in our Magpie lab. But I want to talk about how we're going to do this. First thing I need to do is to say, hey, is this keyword anywhere in my message? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say int spot gets description dot index of keyword. And if spot is equal to negative one, then go ahead and return false. Because if I get to this point and it's not anywhere in there, then there's nothing really for me to look at. So then I run into the issue of, okay, well, once I get to this point, I know I have it. So I do need to check the beginning of it. So if I'm going to check the beginning, let's go ahead and create a Boolean variable called front. And I'm going to say that front is going to get the following. Front is going to get 
if spot is equal to zero, then th if this is true, this means that it's at the very, very beginning and there's nothing before it. But if it's not at the very, very beginning, that means there's something before it and I can check to see using or if that element before it is a space. So I can say if description dot substring starting at spot minus one and going to spot dot equals a space. Now I say dot equals, what would be really nice is I could also use char at. But remember that char at's not on the AP list, so it's not something that teachers are required to teach. But char at is a wonderful tool here. I could have said description dot char at spot minus one. And I could actually use true equality if I did that and say it really is equal to this. Now notice that I'm using or so because I'm using or, if this first one's true, that's going to be a short circuit. It's never going to test this subtraction here and we're good. This will be true. If this is false, then I know that there has to be an element before and I can check that spot before. And so front is going to tell me if I'm good in the front. In other words, do I have word at the beginning or do I have a space followed by word? So what I need to do now is similarly I need to boolean back. So I need to check the back. So keep in mind that if I'm looking for word at the back, then I need to make sure that whatever my spot is plus my keyword's length, so spot plus keyword dot length. I need to make sure if that, that is equal to the length of my description. So description.length. Or keep in mind that if it's not at the end of the word, then I should be able to check the spot afterwards to see if it's a space, just like we checked the spot before to see if it's a space. So I'm going to have to say description. dot substring and I'm going to be have to check spot plus keyword dot length spot plus keyword dot length plus one and my pen's not working right now spot dot or spot plus keyword dot length plus one dot equals and I want to know if that equals a space. And keep in mind when I go through here I'm either going to know if the front is back go I'm going to know if the front is good I'm going to know if the back is good so then all I need to know is if the front and back are both good, then we contain the word and the word itself. So I'm going to return, ooh, return front and back. So the idea here is that I'm going to check to see, do I even have the word in there in the first place? And if I don't, then just say, hey, I don't have it. But if I have it, I need to check to make sure the spot before it is okay, or is it at the front of my message? The spot after it is okay, or is it at the end of my message? And if both of those parameters are okay, then I want to go ahead and return my result as true. Otherwise, I'm going to return false because one of these will have messed up. And so, as I said, this is probably the hardest way to look at, but remember that we did talk about this in our Magpie class. So, if you remember how we did Magpie, 
we're going to do we're doing something very similar to what we did in Magpie when we were looking to see if a particular word was typed in. So that is to be. So now what we need to do, and by the way, this is also one of the longest questions on our AP exam this year. We're actually going to have to go through the entire list of messages and we're going to have to see which messages contain a particular keyword and we're going to have to remove those messages into another list. So the idea is that if I have some list of stuff here and some of them have disk and some of them don't, then I want to make sure that I return a new list that contains everything bad and all of those things have been removed from our original message list. So if I'm looking at this and I wanted to remove stuff that contained disk, notice that this had the word disk. Actually, it didn't have the word disk because, well, actually, this is my description. So the first space was okay, and there's a space. So this one would be removed. This had a space before and a space after disk, so it will be removed. This had a space before and a space after, so it will be removed. This one didn't have a space before, so this one's going to stay. And so notice that the ones that got removed were the ones where the beginning and the space or space before and space after, space before and space after. But this place where disk had the backslash instead of the space in front of it, it stayed in our messages. So we need to talk about how we're actually going to write this. Keep in mind that we're supposed to be returning a list. So I need to make sure I create a list and that I return a list. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, array list of type log message and we'll go ahead and call this output gets new array list of type log message and I want to make sure down here at the end that I return output. Now what I need to make sure I do is that I go through my original list. Remember my original list was called message list. I need to go through this original list and I need to take out everything that doesn't have it. So I'm going to go back to my code here. Um, one way that I could do this is I could set up a loop. So for int i gets 0, i is less than message list dot size i plus plus but this is problematic and the reason is that as I go through this list and I remove elements from it I'm gonna run into the issue that this is gonna i plus plus and I may skip some elements so I'm gonna to have to compensate for that either by doing an i minus minus in my code or by redoing this as a while loop to make sure that it only gets incremented if I don't remove an element so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, so log message msg, and this is going to get message list dot get whatever's at position i. And I want to know if this message contains my keyword. So if message dot contains uh, what, what was the method yeah contains word keyword if it contains the word then I need to make sure that one I add it to output two I remove it from message list and three I fix I because I is going to be a problem so if this is true then I need to make sure I do those two things. So output dot add message and I want to make sure that I remove, oh, excuse me, uh, message list dot remove whatever is that I and then I need to make sure that I I minus minus because I need to make sure that I go back since I've removed an element I have one fewer element in my message list so I need to make sure that I I minus minus to go back and take care of that so I can do this in a for loop 
But what you'll often see is people doing this as a while loop. So let me go ahead and erase this. Come on, let me erase it. So if I do this as a while loop, um, again, I still have to create the array list of type log message. Actually, no, excuse me, I've already got that created up here. I don't need to redo it. So what I need to do is uh, have some variable, int i gets zero, and then while i is well, I need to make sure while i is less than my message list dot size, while this is true, I want to get the element out. So uh, log message msg gets uh, message list dot get i and then if and then I want to check to see if msg dot contains word for my uh, keyword then I want to make sure that I do two things I need to make sure that I remove it and add it so I'm going to say output dot add msg and I need to uh, message list dot remove i else if it doesn't contain the word then I can go ahead and move to the next element in my list so this is an alternate way that we can do this and some teachers may prefer to use this because we tend to use a while when we don't know how many times something's going to happen. And really, the, whether or not this happens depends on the outcome of message.containsWord. Either way will work. You just Whenever you're using that for loop, you have to be careful using a for loop because it's really easy to lose those elements. So this is question two, probably 